Welcome again to these reflections on the Catholic liturgy for the coming Sunday. We're not into one of the numerical Sundays because uh, this Sunday is replaced by the celebration of the feast of the transfiguration of the Lord. Something that is found in uh, all of the, the synoptic gospels. Each gospel, Matthew, Mark, and Luke narrate a little different uh, variants of this event uh, on Mount Tabor, which uh, the specially chosen trio, Peter, James, and John, again, are particular witnesses of. But this transfiguration of the Lord uh, is a very important feast, uh, looked upon both in the Eastern and Western Church as something very special. Uh, anything we, you might say that has to do with visions or seeing things, uh, we are a skeptical crowd, uh, us 21st century human beings, very skeptical of anything. But you know, it's something interesting about the, the power of vision. And I, I think it's good to reflect on this. I, uh, I've read a number of, uh, of uh, articles about sculptures and especially sculptors that worked in, in marble. And I am utterly fascinated how uh, these, these, these men of, of great talent looked at a piece of marble and they, they said that I could see my sculpture in it already. They could see by the lines and the veins of that, that piece of uh, uh, marble in front of them, this hunk of, to us would be a hunk of stone, they could see the beauty that they could create uh, from that piece of marble. In a very special way, the transfiguration uh, shares uh, us with us an insight uh, into the majesty and the power uh, of God in Christ. And it's very important, before we even start with the transfiguration, to remember that our basic, you might say, basic faith that we are invited to believe in is the resurrection of Jesus, not the transfiguration of Jesus. It, it's part of it. But the basic belief in the resurrection is the most important of, you might say, the articles of faith that we have concerning Jesus, and even with regard to the transfiguration. The transfiguration as a dimension, a very important dimension, uh, it's important that when we, we look at the resurrection of Jesus, it's very interesting that the, uh, uh, the apostolic witness and the teaching of the Gospels and the epistles uh, keep in front of us the notion that this Jesus, this human Jesus, this Jesus, there's God and man, but truly a human being was raised from the dead. And that's why... Uh, the expressions of interchange and meeting and encounter with him uh, are mystical and mysterious, but they're not awe-inspiring. It's almost like he's alive. He's really alive. The same one that was crucified. He's really alive. He's really alive. That keeps coming through. Now, in the transfiguration, we have a little different, you might say, emphasis. The emphasis is not that only he is alive, they, they, were, they were quite certain of that. When they walked up to the top of Mount Tabor, they were walking with somebody. And at the end, when they came down from Mount Tabor, they were walking with that same Jesus. But what they experienced on Mount Tabor was not just the resurrection, you might say, but the power of God, a radiance. You know, it, it's, it's mentioned in the Bible how Moses, when he went up to the Mount Sinai to get the Ten Commandments, came down and his face so radiated with the, with the, you might say, the glory and the power and the closeness to God that he had to put a veil over his face after he instructed the people. It was just too much for them to take. The radiance, this radiance, this idea of the radiance that comes through the glory uh, of God uh, is, you might say, what is being described in uh, the message of the transfiguration, also uh, in that message of the transfiguration, uh, almost the same words as used at Jesus' um, baptism in the Jordan is being said to the apostles when it's said to them, uh, this is my beloved son, listen to him. 
And on either side of him are two people that we have been commanded to listen to, two great prophets, you might say, Moses, the giver of the law, Elijah, who has always been uh, forecast as a, a precursor or someone who would bring a message uh, of uh, the coming Messiah, someone who would, would bring about the kingdom of God uh, and was a powerful force of God's will in the world. Uh, unlike Moses, he was always addressing people of how to uh, worship God in a real way in the situation that they were in. So the Feast of the Transfiguration uh, is, a, is, is fully and beautifully a reminder to us of the divine radiance of Jesus Christ, a radiance that for us is so important because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And yet his words are ultimate the words. They are far higher really than Moses or Elijah, though it comes from the same God in a very real way. It's a very different, uh, you might say, level of listening because in his message of forgiveness, in his message of compassion, in his message of peace, is the ultimate word of God. This is my beloved son. Listen to him.